this is Kenneth Figu, and we're back with part three of our epic saga, The Sickle Man is Here. Firstly, just a quick update on some news. With the ice storms in Austin, Texas, we raised over $16,000 to benefit the Austin Area Urban League, translating to getting 33 people off the streets and into housing and putting food in their bellies and clothes on their backs. I am never not amazed by the kindness and generosity of this community and how we take care of our own, but also now others indeed. Secondly, our new composer Caden Lytell and I have been working on bringing some amazing music and new orchestrations to the show. I cannot wait for you to hear them in the episodes we have coming up, along with a few amazing people who will be joining the cast this season. And now, on with the show. At long last, the circle is closed, and Jake, Amada, and Chad and the gang find themselves back at Camp Wanna Grind a lot. The stage is set in more ways than one, but as the ghoul scouts check in and the usual summer hijinks ensue, there is one cot left empty, and someone who has been ever present is missing. Simon. Put on those 3D glasses and grab napkins for the buttered popcorn. The Sickle Man is here, part three begins. sakes. It's like 7 a.m. I'm not ready for this. I only fell asleep at like 2 a.m. after traipsing through that goddamn swamp. My shoes are gross. I'm going to have to wash them off with the hose. Let's get up and check in. Get some breakfast. Oh no you don't. (laughs) Get off me. No. You're my personal talking pillow. You... Need to brush your teeth, Romeo. But warm blanket and warm reasons. Let's stay a little longer. (laughs) Stop it! That tickles! Hey, that's weird. 
You like it. No, not that. Bed over there hasn't been slept in. Wasn't Simon supposed to meet us here in the morning? He's probably on his way. We'll likely see him at breakfast. So what menial bullshit job do you think you'll be stuck with this year? With a bit of luck, they'll have me teaching boating or something at the waterfront with you. But more than likely, I'll be on the lifeguard tower playing adult to a bunch of kids, and you'll be on the other end of the campground teaching laser tag with real laser guns. Less talk. More warm. Oh my. It looks like someone is mixing and mingling in a very unscout-like way. Jeez. Marianne, get out of here! I realize some things can be super casual, like playing the old Park the Cor Vega before Marriage Amata. But when the bugle blows, you don't. I assume you're here to counsel again? Check in at the quartermaster hut for uniforms. That is, once you found your pants. Toodles! You know what? The sickle man's whole deal is starting to appeal to me. <sighs> Pass me my pants. Let's put our fake faces on. Mm, I hate these cots. Come on. Let's hit the bathroom and get some stupid scout uniforms. What's going on over there? Oh, hell. It's the judge. Let's keep walking. Hey! You two! Over here! Well, so much for a quiet morning. Is that the crime scene team? Well, well, well. Jacob White and Amada Hayes. I understand from some of the officers that you got past a roadblock last night. Got past is a bit of a stretch. Commander Johns waved us through. Those kind of calls are no longer his to make. But more importantly, you were spotted in a working vehicle. Is that correct? Working is... Also a bit of a stretch. Don't get cute with me, young lady. Answer the question. Yeah, we were getting a ride here with Davy the surfer ghoul. Interesting. We haven't been able to locate that vehicle. I talked to him earlier, but I can't make out half the shit he says. Did you kids see anything last night? Sure. If you count me almost being... Eaten by bears. We had some trouble with bears. Almost got chomped on. What time did you get in here? About 1 a.m. or so. And you didn't see anything? No, sir. Judge... We've got a problem. One minute, Fletcher. You two consider yourselves on my watch list. Keep your noses clean and carry on with your business. Sure thing. Have a good morning. Well, that was... Shh. Around the corner here. I want to listen. Your Honor, Scoutmaster Stewart has been destroyed. It wasn't no animal or super mutant, either. What? Officer Barnett found his dome cleaved open and his arms hacked off. The coroner said that judging from the amount of fluid that seeped out into the ground out back, he figures he was attacked sometime between 11 p.m. and midnight. This is getting out of hand. Completely amateur hour. How many officers do we need here to keep law and order? Did they find those files he had mentioned to Officer Hawkins? Nothing. His office is empty. I don't like it. It's too coincidental. Let's keep this quiet for now. I have to head back to AMS Tower, have another chat with Hawkins and that drunk pervert Slick Willie again. Yes, sir. Have a good day. Jeez. Scoutmaster Stewart was offed? Why? What would be the point? They mentioned something about files. Maybe someone found something and became a target for the Overseer? You think it has something to do with Simon's key? Not sure. Come on, let's shower. You need to brush your teeth, and we'll get checked in. There's something I want to check tonight. Tonight? Oh, great. More sleuthing after dark. My favorite. Where the hell is Simon? Next. Next, Kappa and Guardian move to the front. Oh. Hey, dude. It's you. Remember me from last year? The Chad. And I'm Susie. And this is Ella. Sup. We are just so happy to be back at camp for more fun. Buckle up, kids, because this year's gonna be a doozy. <laughs> yes, yes. First and last name, please. Chad Johnson. Susie Davis. Hi, I'm Ella. 
No one knows where I came from or what I am, but what I really, really want is to have my fanny tickled. <laughs> That's nice. 500 caps deposited, please, for enrollment. Uh, deja vu, bro. I'm registering as a camp counselor again this year. Counselors are required. We have adopted a unisex policy for the primary campground this year. Oh, Chad, unisex. Isn't it a game you like to play with randos? Shh, not now, sweet pea. Uh, sure, dude, whatever. Yes, now I remember you. You're gross. I'm assigning you as counselor for the Kiwanis Cabin Ring. Second C Scoutmaster Stuart has been indisposed. Oh, well, whatever, bro. Who's running the joint? Head counselor Pro Tab Scoutmaster Brian Williams. Well, fuck. Proceed down the trail to the right, see the quartermaster for uniforms, then proceed to the main lodge for counselor assignments. Next! Oh, they're with me. Names? I'm uh, Moose. Moose Miller. Mm-hmm. And you? Patsy Parker. Do you have any cabins with a view? Like, I like a view, you know. A view, eh? Ah, yes. Counselors Miller and Parker. I am assigning you to the Ticonderoga Lodge. Ooh, that sounds fancy. Does it overlook the lake? No, it adjoins the open cesspool. Oh my god. And, w well, you're a big one, aren't you? Name, please? Punch. Full name, please. First and last. Punch full name, please. No, say your last name. Last name. No, what is your last name? Punch. No, what is your first name? Punch. Right, fine. Mr. Punch Punch, let's put you out by White Cedar Swamp. There's a lean-to shelter there. Oh, punch like swamp. Go place for tasty mushrooms for stew. Yes, yes, carry on. Come on, gang. Let's drop our gear and hit the showers. Hopefully they have an outfit your size, punch dude. I'm not wearing pants. They better have a skirt, because I won't be caught dead in pants. Oh, shit. Quick, down this way. Hey. It's that lame new responder cop guy. Crap, dude! If they spawn us, we're toast! Ooh! Remember them, Ella? When we played with the nice doctor and made lemonade for everyone? Oh boy, do I! Wait till they taste our bug juice surprise this year! Punch! Bro! Get out of the trail! Oh, uh, okay. Oh! Berries! Punch pick! Out of hand, Hawkins. He's out of control. He has Fletcher in his back pocket. It's a total power play. We locked horns in the vault at times, but since then he's been using the chaos to position himself as a central figure. Judge, jury, executioner, and now enforcement. There are those of us who have been talking on the down low. If you need us, we're with you. I appreciate that, but tell them to keep it cool. The last thing we need is some kind of struggle for power. He's going to be occupied with the grand opening of the new AMS Maximum Security Facility. I'll be lurking around here. My primary concern is for these kids' safety right now. Clear? Yes, sir. And should Rex or Johnson happen to show up, have the officers steer clear for now. Those two have a history of getting in the middle of things and flushing things out. Besides... She has unresolved business with those two. They'll make good bait. What are you looking at? Nothing. But make sure you make the message clear. Got it? Sure, I guess. Where are you headed? Meeting up with Hugo Warren. And we're headed out to the old Miller farm. You want backup? Nope. We're good. Later. Phew. That was close. Punch, dude, he totally saw your big green ass up in the air. Punch like berries. They're squishy, right, little friend? Well, that's right, Mr. Punch. Maybe we can make some jelly jam. Punch, make that with meat bags sometime. Squishy quiet. Squishy quiet. Squishy quiet. <laughs> that's weird. If he spotted us, figured he'd bust our ass. Who cares, bro? Let's go get some breakfast. I'm starving. I hope they have biscuits and gravy, or maybe some Brahmin steak and eggs. Hell no. You and me are getting into the shower first. 
You smell like a corpse, and I need to get all this gross dirt out from under my nails. Maybe we can play hide and go poke. I'm going to go get the kids sorted, and then I'll come join you guys. Look at all the num-nums! Well, hello there, Bean Sprout. What can old Willie slap down on your plate? <laughs> some of my awesome possum bacon, or maybe some mole rat sausage with some of my fresh biscuits in a gulper slurry gravy. <laughs> can you spell dirty old weirdo? Let's play spelling. D I R. Not now, Ella. Can I have a bowl of sugar bombs, please, mister? They're my favorite. Here you go, darling. You can take what you want from the box, but not the whole box, mind you. Last kid that ate a whole box of that stuff in one go? Oh, deed. <laughs> well, I won't. Oh, let's sit at the comfy chair by the fire, Ella. Oh, I like fire. The warmth tickles my fanny. <laughs> well, well, well. Oh, I know that voice. I hate that voice. Let's kill that voice. Hello, Becky. Surprised to see me? Not really. Sometimes when you flush shit, it comes bubbling back up. You go, girl. <laughs> you trapped me down there under the outhouse with those disgusting crap-covered ghouls. It was gross. Chad said sometimes that life's a bitch. Can you spell bitch? B E C K. Why? Why? Yay! <laughs> We're not done, you and I. You know it, sister. Well, hey there, Becky. And new camper. Susie, isn't it? I've heard lots about you from little Becky here. I'll bet. It's nice to meet you. Now, Becky, are you making friends like we talked about? Good humor and a positive mental attitude are the cornerstones of good scouting ethics. Yes, we'll make friends. Or not. Someone get me a switchblade. I want to see what her insides look like. <laughs> Becky, shouldn't you be assisting Mr. Willard in the kitchen? Yes. Good girl. I need to address all of our new counselors and this year's Ghoul Scouts. Ahem. <clears throat> Ahem. On behalf of all of us here, we wish to welcome you all back to Camp Wanna Grind a Lot, Appalachia's premier youth enrichment destination, and now home to the Ghoul Scouts program for irradiated, dermatologically challenged children of Appalachia who inspire to be non feral and productive citizens to assist in the rebuilding of our great land. In fact, the word citizen originated in the 1300s in Anglo French, pronounced citizen, meaning city dweller or town dweller. Later, in 1795, during the French Revolution, the word was used as a republican alternative to monsieur. <laughs> in Adam Smith, Theory of Moral Sentiments. Yeah, how about you just get on with it before whatever we just had from breakfast from that old weirdo back finishes moving its way uh, through my intestinal tract? Eat old Willie's dick, you log eared bean pole. <laughs> Interrupting a superior is frowned upon, and you'll see proper polite protocols of interjection outlined in Chapter 18, Section 12A of your counselor guidebook. <laughs> yeah, well, we had to use it as toilet paper. It made for a refreshing alternative to leaves, pine cones, or mole rat skin. Nifty! <laughs> well, I'm sure we can get you to another set lickety split. Hey, who took all the goddamn toilet paper? I had to wipe my ass with a possum, and that little bastard was pretty pissed off. <laughs> Chad, isn't it? Aren't you a wanted felon? Nah, dude. That's the other guy. Uh, Simon. I'm here to pitch in and hopefully get off. Oh my. Come on, Pads! Everyone is waiting! Oh, no, no, no. I'm not going in there. Come on, babe! Everyone is here! You look fine! That guy put me in shorts. I look like a single old librarian. Um, oh, okie dokie. <laughs> well, grab a seat. Jake? Amada? 
Surprised to see you guys here. Isn't the diner going well? Nah, Simon brought us here too. Vacation. We needed a vacation. Clean air and stuff. There's only so much you can stand when it comes to dealing with people. Taint that the truth. Moose. Pats. Park it. Come on, Pats. Bring those masculine shorts over here and sit on my lap. This is going to be a miserable two weeks. Where's Mr. Punch? We thought it best that he not bust in here and spook the locals yet. We'll introduce him in a better way. Chad has a plan. (laughs) Well, as I was saying, I have some exciting news and some news that is not so nifty. So I'm going to open this year's welcome ceremony with what I like to call a new sandwich. (laughs) Some of the delightful good stuff represented by a slice of rye bread with a layer of not so good news, like snallygaster tongue. Then finish off with a nice buttered slice of good news represented by another right slice away, of bread. Or bite the board, dude. Davy needs at least three hours left in the day for drinking and raising rats. Firstly, I am excited to inform you that this year's program is going to be N I F T Y. <laughs> what does that spell? Um, Titty? That's my girl right there. <laughs> I ain't never been so proud. Nifty. That's right. <laughs> now, before the Great War, a yearly tradition here at Camp Wanna Grind a Lot was our yearly jamboree. Well, because of those green blooded communists, we have not had one since October 21st, 2077. <laughs> well, hold on to your sock suspenders, folks, because we're bringing it back. <laughs> now, to tell you more about that is fellow counselor and activities coordinator Marianne Belts. <laughs> we have two weeks of merit badger and fun. We'll be powering you through all kinds of challenges focused on our five principles of good scouting that reflect the spirit of exploration, survival, teamwork, research, discovery, and innovation. But that's not all. We're bringing back classic events such as our fishing contest. Hey Jake, that's good for you. You could like land yourself a stinky Amada. Shut up, skink. You shut up. Hey, chill like Bizzle Beats Kitchens. Good vibes only. We'll also have our pie eating contest. And lest I remind you all that I'm the ranking food eating champion from Vault 76 sausage eating competition. Speaking of sausage eating, where the fuck is Simon? I'm getting worried. Last but not least, we have a special guest who'll be running our costume contest and talent competition in our new theater pavilion. The star of stage and screen, Damon Toon. He'll be broadcasting our costume face-off and talent competition live next week before our end of season dance. Oh boy, Ella, a pageant! Remember when Mama used to take us to pageants? Remember when you shoved Alice Lawton off the stage? Can you say compound fracture? Broadcast? Where exactly is he broadcasting to? Three whole working TVs, Appalachia. Isn't that exciting? Breathtaking. To celebrate these next few weeks of thrills and civic duty and good scouting, we'll be tracking your progress on the wall chart over there that's like a swell little board game. The faster and further along, the more prizes you'll get. I'm calling it the legendary grind in honor of scouting month. Forever grinding. I've got that tattooed on my abs, ladies. Don't all line up at once. Well, that was the delightful news. Now for the Debbie Downer news. Well, it seems that our delightful Scoutmaster Stuart has been heavily damaged in some sort of attack. I'm sorry, what? Well now, calm down, Dick, and let him explain. Damn it, I hate when you call me that. Interrupting a superior is frowned on, and you'll see proper polite protocols of interjection outlined in Chapter 18, Section 12A of your Counselor Guidebook. Hmm. Now, it appears as though Scoutmaster Stewart was attacked and completely dismembered. Now, I've been assured by the 5-0 new responders that officers are looking into the matter, but we won't let that incident spoil our summer fun, right, gang? Susie, did you? Nuh-uh, wasn't me. So who's barking the skids at the beach club, big hoss? I'm sorry? What? He wants to know who's in charge. I am, and fear not. Under my guidance, you'll leave here with a full sash of merit badges and one of three different unique backpacks that I brought back from the afterlife. (laughs) Now, we're going to quickly go around the room and introduce ourselves as the beautiful and intelligent Marianne here passes out your assignments. Let's start with you. Groovy! 
Name's Davey. Totally stoky to be crashing at these digs. If any of you grommets are looking to hit out the lake to catch us a pearl off the crackers, I'm your dead. Like, he's kind of cut. Yeah, he is. Hey, sitting right here. <laughs> okay, well, whatever he said. He said he's teaching surfing out on the lake if anyone wants to learn. Um, groovy. <laughs> now you. Amata Hayes. This will be my second year and, big shocker, I'm a lifeguard. You'll see me reading in the lifeguard stand, trying to ignore the yelling and roughhousing. Try not to drown. Yeah, I'm Jake, sarcastic dickhead and apparently stage managing and doing poetry readings. Are you kidding me? Over there in the back, please. You, who just came in. I am the flesh entity known as Solomon. <laughs> High priest to he who chews on cardigans, the great one who seeketh the light. I shall be instructing you in the dark art of macaroni art and wallet making. I honestly have no idea why my light requested me here. Okie dokie. And you? Moose. I do moose stuff. I'm coaching athletics. I'm Patsy, and apparently I'm working in the kitchen? I'm, I'm sorry, what? No. No fucking way. Button it. We're all digging in here. <laughs> Old Willie struck gold in their bar titties. <laughs> you get anywhere near me, you old weirdo? And I'll gut you like a fish. Ignatius Willard is the name. You're very single and ready to buck like a bronco chief whose barbecue is known all over these parts. I, too, have a tattoo like that Chuck dude over there. But old Willie's is a tramp stamp from his time in Shanghai. hoo <laughs> <laughs> I'm Nurse Simpson, so if you kids get any bumps and bruises, you'll come see me. If you're also interested in casually trying recreational drugs, you can come see me for that as well. We have all kinds. Sup, I'm David White, casual layabout, filthy casual about the apocalypse. This guy over here is my heterobrosexual life partner, Richard. But whatever you do, don't call him Dick. He hates that. Yeah, uh, hi there. I'm, you know, Williams. I'm, I mean, Rich. Richard. Um, you know, yeah. That was smooth, buddy. Good for you. You'll have the ladies swooning in no time. I'll be manning the climbing wall and obstacle course. So bring your stim packs, because I'm not catching anyone if you fall. Get good. Yeah, and I'll teach, uh, be teaching, uh, you know, knot tying and fire making skills. Great. Last but not least, is Chad. I'll be running athletics with my bro Moose here, but also we'll be running nightly campfires. Ladies, you can find me sunbathing in the buff on the beach from 1 p.m. until 3 p.m. I also teach private lessons on, uh, Rowboating. Oh my god, Chad. <laughs> well, that's most everyone, except some of the female counselors who just finished putting out pillows and blankets for all of you kids. <laughs> oh, uh, Mr. Thomas Mueller over at the Orchard Farm will be teaching some merit badges related to farming and agriculture. He, um, is busy, so he won't be over here, but you'll see lots of him in our off-campground field trips. Uh, we're still missing a few positions, but we'll make do. <laughs> right, Ghoul Scouts. Turn out! Head back to your assigned cabins and then meet in the campfire ring where you'll head off for the afternoon with your counselors. Enjoy that grind! Excuse me, Brian. Can I grab Jake and Amata? Officer Hawkins! <laughs> Why, of course. I have a profound interest in law enforcement. In fact, I have 13 different merit badges in criminal justice, including the very rare and... Yeah, that's great. Jake, Amata? Look, we're not looking for trouble, Hawkins. No, no, I'm not here for you. Look, I... I don't know how to tell you this, but... Lieutenant Commander Macklin radioed in. He found the body of Simon Rex out on the highway, not far from the Red Slow. Oh my god. What? Well, I mean, he can just respond. We've all been through this before. Yeah, but his head is missing. No. No, 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 no. We left him. The fucking bitch must have killed him just after we drove away. The coroner has no idea what the hell is going on, but it looks like in these cases where the head is removed... 
people don't come back or whatever the fuck happens to us. Sometimes it takes days, weeks, or months. Sometimes not at all. Some of the victims she killed last year never came back at all. They never respond. Where is he? Commander Johns had the body moved to Doc C.J. Martin's clinic for observation. He was worried the judge would get wind of it and seize Rex's body. Look, we're looking for... for wherever she's putting the heads. Maybe if we put his head back near his body, well... I don't know. It's the only theory we have at the moment. Thanks, Hawkins. We'll keep our eyes peeled. Have a good day. It happened all over again. The moment we get separated, everything goes to shit. What if he doesn't come back? You know, Simon, he's the most single-track-minded, obsessively focused person I've ever known. In the meanwhile, the least we can do is keep our eyes peeled. We can even start tonight. Every cabin, every building, every cave. She's gotta be lurking around here. If we find where she's hiding out, we find him. Okay, but in the meanwhile, we also need to find that key. I don't even know where to begin. Come on, let's get started with camp life. Yay! Hawkins to base. Hawkins to base. Anders, come back. For fuck's sake, all this technology, and it barely works half the time. Hey, who... Oh, shit, hold it right there. Dear Mom and Dad, it's been a few days at camp, so I'm writing you a letter to tell you about all the swell stuff we've been doing here at camp. I'll send this home through Mr. Messenger, so you should get it sometime next month. Anyway, we've been learning lots of new things. I have a cool counselor named Chad who taught me to spit five feet and how to put you in baseball. He said I have a mean curveball. I've made lots of friends, and each night we perform little skits around the campfire. Sometimes Chad or Moose will tell us scary stories, like the one about the haunted co-ed, or the one about the devil woman who wanted to go steady. Anyway, talk soon. Hey Dad, it's been a week here at camp, and I'm actually having a great time. My lady counselor, Patsy, is really neat. She likes skincare, just like me. We stole some ingredients from the kitchen and had to run away from this little pervert. She taught me how to do my hair and nails, and we've been making our own hair and skin stuff. She said since my skin already sucked, I'd be a great helper. So he tested it on me, and guess what? My eyebrows grew back. We put some toxic goo in it, and that did the trick. My eyebrows are still growing. We have to cut them again tonight. But this place is fun. My counselors must not be having a lot of fun like the cool ones. We had a bunch, but some of them must have quit. Oh, tonight we're making s'mores, and Counselor Bot Nia is going to tell us a scary story. Patsy and I are going to try and do bug spray by the fire. Okay, I love you. Bye. Thank you.
<laughs> Isn't this fun, Mr. Punch? What we build, Punch shovel dip for a long time now. It's a sandcastle, silly. Haven't you ever built a sandcastle? Uh, no. Punch no build. Sand couple. Punch hot. Want ice cold milk stuff again. Oh, that's ice cream. Isn't it nummy? Does someone want to put some suntan lotion on my fanny? <laughs> I'm cooking like a ham. Here's some sunglasses, Ella. Here, you can sit on this little throne in the castle while Punch and I make the dungeon. I was born to sit on a throne. <laughs> little friend sad? Huh? Well, I'm not sad. We're having fun. Punch watch little friend all time. Punch see laugh, then see quiet cry when no one see. When little friend hide from meatbag eyes. Oh, I... I don't know. Not have fun at c c camp place? Lots of little meatbag to play and make loud running noises. Hmm, no. They don't really like me, Anella. That bitch Becky was telling tales about us. So now the other kids won't play with us. Want Punch beat Bucky head in with shovel? Make Sticky quiet. No, we'd get into a lot of trouble. Sometimes, sometimes I wish I was older. Like the big kids, or even dumb Fatsy. All I've ever been is a dumb little girl. Punch not like when little friend's sad. Ella and I were lonely for a long time. At first it was a lot of fun. Because without Mommy and Daddy, we could play all day and all night. We had lots of fun playing tricks on those police and fire people. Playing with teddy bears was lots of fun. <laughs> oh, that's right, Ella. We would make little fun plays with teddy bears we found. Like, uh, we were on a cooking show or at the doctor's office. But then it got quiet. Even the police and the soldiers all went away. Then it was just us. No mommy or daddy, or even a little sister. You have Punch and Chode now. Chode new daddy. Well, that's true. He is, I guess. I just wish people liked me. You have Punch now. Punch love friend. Punch give soft hug. <sighs> Let's just finish our dungeon, Mr. Punch. Punch dig more? How many deep hole? Um... Five or six feet. Bare minimum to bury Becky alive. <laughs> Let's see her dig her way out of this hole. <laughs> and the worms crawl in. The worms crawl out. They crawl all over your dirty snout. Your chest caves in. Your eyes pop out. And your brains turn into sourdough. Oh, man. You say what you want, but there's nothing like catching some rays. I totally don't know how you get to be so lucky-go-happy all the time. Are we supposed to be teaching axe throwing or some lame thing? Nah, I think that Poindexter Brynan wanted us to teach milking or some damn thing. I told him, look, nerd, I only grab one teat and it's not on some two-headed cow. You two have been having a blast out here. Me? I'm stuck in the kitchen with that old pervert Slick Willie. You tried to get me to let him take a picture at my skirt for a marriage badge. Cheapers creepers. Christ. I fucking hate it out here. Aw, oh, it's a nice break. Outdoors and stuff? Punch and I have been teaching the curtain climbers how to hunt. You should have seen them running and screaming when he first popped out of his camp in the swamp. Whatever. I'm flipping over. Would you like to put some more cooking oil on my back? The last thing I want is to look like I'm half-baked. Moose! Bro! The Manfredi twins scored some giggle weed. We're gonna go smoke it in the old Indian burial ground where nothing bad ever happens. Aw, oh, dude! Score! Like, don't even think about it. Aw, oh, come on, Pats! Yeah, don't be a lame old Pats. Let's go! If I have to teach one more fucking merit badge, I'm gonna lose it. They bought some of that good stuff off the surfer dude. Come on! They're gonna do jumping jacks and wet t-shirts while we toke it up. It's like watching watermelons roll around in a blanket. Maybe we can gank them and bury them out back. You get some sand in your coin purse? Watch your beef. You've been bitching for a month now. Gee, I don't know. We could fucking own the wasteland like we owned the vault. 
Instead, we're playing all straight edge at a scout camp, and you went from being the king of the vault to playing nursemaid to some totally fucked up brat. Hey, don't you ever, and I mean fucking ever, call her that again. What the hell happened to you? Me? What happened to you? You're a total joke now. Everyone sees it. We're miserable. We're bored. This is boring. Right, Moose? Uh, look, pants. Well, say something. Or are you becoming a pussy too? Really? Nothing? Good to know. Come on, dude. Why don't you pop some more Cam's pats? You turn into a fucking drugstore. Fine, Moose. Fuck you, too. I'm sick of this crap. Oh, hey, hey, Big P. What's all the noise of friction? Oh, uh, like, hey, Davy. Love your trunks. Thanks, Dolly. Brought these baggies all the way from Virginia Beach. Where'd your body boy to go? Oh, he? Oh, it, it doesn't matter. You look like you just bit your board and wiped out on the pier. Grab a fun board. I'll teach you some turns. Built a sweet wave out machine -o. You never hit the waves? Well, I like tried to water ski once, but I couldn't find a lake with a slope. <laughs> Crawl up on the sand, huh, mama? Let's slap the surf. You can ride my board. Um, well, I just might. <laughs> kids. Careful! Now remember, you want to pick the ripe ones. Mr. Mueller, I'm not sure what apple to look for. Hey, Becky! Want some applesauce? What? Oh, you hit me with that gross rotten apple! Win one! Let's throw someone into the cider press! Whee! <laughs> That's enough of that, Susie Davis, please. Sorry, Mr. Mueller. Well, remember that apples ripen from the outside of the tree towards the trunk. If you're not sure of the ripeness, look for apples that are the furthest from the bottom. So you want to carefully use a ladder, but look for ones that have a nice even color, that are firm and have no nicks or bruises, okay? Okay, Mr. Mueller. Thank you. Do you have a favorite apple, Mr. Mueller? Now that is a good question. A very good question. Come over here. I want to introduce you to someone very special. Jethro, stop nipping at that kid and get over My here. My cat always says, keep sucking till the job is done, Jethro. <laughs> there. Susie, meet Goldie. Now, she is something very, very special. It's a miracle she survived the Great War, but she's a hearty old gal. What's so special about her? My ancestor, Thomas Grimes, was an orchard man himself, and he created what is probably the best frying apple ever, the Grimes Golden Apple. From this tree was born the Golden Delicious Apple, and that became our state apple back in 1995. She's my pride and joy. Ooh, is it nummy? You betcha. Here, have one. Mmm. It's sticky, Yummy Ella. You know, once upon a time, there were somewhere between 1,000 and 1,600 different kinds of apples grown here in Appalachia after apple trees were brought over from Europe. Now, after the Great War, these trees are all that's left of the heirlooms, the originals. Oh, I love them. I remember when Mommy and Daddy used to take Ella and me on some hay rides and for candy apples in the corn maze at the farms. But that was so long ago now. Hey, I remember now. Over there. The hayride was over there. Over there? Yes, a hundred hayride every year. 
A nice man used to take Ella and me. Was that your daddy? Yes. Yes, indeed. Daddy loved his hay rides every year. Hey, speaking of caramel apples, let's round everyone up and have some. How about that? What in tar nation? Hey, get off there! Beep, beep. Hey, Susie, eat tractor. <laughs> Becky, get off there! Ella! Donde una dante! Dona una dante! Clatama mitas! <laughs> Look out! It's beard off! Ella, what did you do? I'm getting stronger! What did you do? Oh, what did you do? Oh, my head. You'll be fine, Becky. It's empty anyway. Becky Watts, go inside and wait for Brian to pick you up. Oh, man. Yes, sir. Um, I'm sorry about Goldie, Mr. Mueller. <sighs> Everything has a season, Susie. Sometimes dead wood needs to be removed from the tree to flourish. It... it is what is. But apple trees, like people, are sturdy stock. She has strong roots, like me. She'll come back. She'll flourish. I would be hella mad. <laughs> come on, let's get everyone together. We have things to finish. Things have gotten real weird here. We lost a lot of the counselors, like they just took off or something. Counselor Mata and Counselor Jake had a big fight with Skymaster Brian the other day about something. He's kind of an asshole. There's lots of police around here. They're real, real nice, but one of them got real mad when Billy and I were spying on them down by the lake. They must have been fishing or something because they pulled up something real big I couldn't see. I didn't think we had fish in the lake. Well, I have to go. We're getting ready for our big costume competition and talent show tonight. Will you be watching on TV? I hope so. Maybe you can bring me home tomorrow? I hope you got this. Love, Willie. Hello, Father. I need a friend named Susie. She has this neat doll named Ella that talks and we go on adventures. There's this mean girl named Becky that hurt Ella last year. She has been really mean to Susie. She put a possum in her bed and frogs in her cereal. So Susie and I are going to get her back. Ella has lots of ideas. We replaced her soap with fire starter blocks and chased her with matches. Get me water! Well, here you go, Mr. Toon. May I say, this is a real pleasure. <laughs> well, it should be. If I had seen what this godforsaken place looked like, I would have made alternate arrangements. But it'll do. <laughs> Our scouts went above and beyond, Mr. Toon, and have erected a timber frame stage in the classic structure. This particular stage is a textbook proscenium stage that is characterized by a deep and gentle slope that rises away from the audience. Note the traditional apron in front with parquet, a flooring also known as the four stage. <laughs> Did you know Will that- someone shut this fucking guy up? Troll Shanka, where's my green room? I got mole rat shit on my shoes. We go live in two minutes, people. <laughs> we sure do have a real roster of talent tonight, Marianne Belts, including our own little Becky, who will be doing a little tap dancing number to a classic tune. We have some counselors getting in on the action, too. How thrilling. Right you are, Brian. These past few weeks have been a spectacular exercise in good citizenship. In fact, I feel more confident in the blossoming relationship you and I have formed. <laughs> I feel the very same, Marianne. 
I also think we're at the stage where we could proceed to mid-base. Mid-base? Why, yes. As I am a chaste individual, licking my hand while I recite French poetry is an appropriate activity that doesn't result in messy naughtiness. Oh, Marianne, you vixen. You wrinkle my freshly pressed underwear. <laughs> Amara. We don't have time. We're it. There's no one else. The few counselors that are here are it. Everyone is missing and likely dead. Well, what are we supposed to do? It's been almost two weeks of nothing. No leads, nothing. I'm not waiting here to be picked off by her. So what do we do? Let's go over to the Mueller farm and use his ham radio. His still works. We need help, so it's time to call in the judge. Are you sure that's a good idea? We don't have a choice. Okay, but let's swing by the cabin to arm ourselves first. I planned on it. Here we go, folks. Places! Hey, you, little brat, get off the camera. Go find a swing set or something. Christ. Draw Shanka! Where's my microphone? Where's that radio guy running the camera? I'm here. Upstart snotty TV douchebag. What was that? I can hear you over all the static and dead air from your radio station. Get ready. Satellite acquired. Going live in five, four, three, two... People of Appalachia, tonight we're airing dazzling acts of dancing, costume creeps, and musical musings live from Camp Wanna Grind a Lot. Grab some popcorn, clean those 3D glasses, and cuddle close on that fungus covered sofa. This is the Tuniversal Star Search. Tonight's episode is sponsored by the Aristocracy. Are you Appalachia royalty? Find out and join the elite. Cannibals welcome. And now, your host, Damon Toon. Good evening, Tuneheads, and welcome to the 15th Tuniversal Star Search. Tonight, we have a complete lineup of the Crystal Lake region's brightest stars who will be competing for a treasure chest of 5,000 caps. Will a little lady tap dance her way into our hearts? Will a strapping fellow shock us with feats of strength? Let's find out now. First up is charming little ghoul scout Logan LeClaire, who will be performing stand-up comedy with some of his own original content. Let's see what fashion he's rocking. Well, looks like a cat mascot head on a cowboy outfit with chaps. A cat boy? Cow cat? Amazing! We love it! Take it away, Logan! Thank you, thank you. Wow, what a warm night. Man, it's been quite a few weeks here at camp. We've been meeting all sorts of wildlife. Hey, what do you call a deer with no eyes? No idea. Tough crowd, tough crowd. Hey, it's okay, winning isn't everything. That's what's always inscribed on every second place trophy. You guys miss pizza? Oh man, I miss pizza. But it's okay, we can still make it. The best post-war pizza? Extra cheese, but hold the mushroom cloud. Get off the stage, you little loser. <laughs> wow, that was kind of awful, kid. Joel Shanka? Yeah, yeah, that gets a zero. A solid zero from our judges. But you have a great future as a feral. I'm gonna eat your face off, I will. Well, tuned heads at home, one awful star has fallen from the heavens. Up next is Davey, a self-described surfer ghoul who is coming out here with two eyeballs that he's tinkered with to form a zany band. This surfer bro is rocking a pumpkin suit with matching shorts and a mullet trucker hat. Getting some surfing Halloween vibes here, folks. Give a big Tuniversal Star Search welcome to Davey and the Electros. What's happening, guys? Let me hear it, Apalachia! Oh my god. He's like a total dreamboat. I say, let me hear it, guys! Is this shit? Nerds. Get off the stage, you Look weird at Mr. asshole! 
Hit the dead cats! My eyebrows gone zongo! Amateur hour! Troll shaker! <laughs> nice shot! Clear the stage! I have no idea what that was, but that wasn't music. Judges? Yeah, you get a negative five. And one of them said he'll see you in hell. Oh, man! Up next, we have, uh... A, a bit of an old hat here. Mr. Ignatius Willard, who will be doing what he calls the ping pong trick that he'll be doing to a harmonica number. <laughs> yeah, hold tight, folks. You've never seen hangers like these. Old Willie lost his ball bearings to the red Chinese. Docs replaced them with softballs. <laughs> Troll Shaker! Hello? Anyone? Anyone, please, is, is anyone out there? I'm lost. Please, someone, anyone, get me out of here. I can't find the atomic shop access point, please. I need to get out. I'm losing control, please help. Someone has to hear me. Hear me, help! Help! Ten seconds remaining. Please exit the facility or you will be lost. This concludes part three of The Sickle Man is Here. Part four, the final installment of this multi part tale, will be dropping shortly. Fire and madness is coming. <laughs>